This tutorial is going to go over the anatomy of the kidney. We're going to start macro and look at the kidney as a whole, all its components, and we're going to get smaller and smaller and more specialized. Now, remember we have two kidneys. Location of the kidneys is going to be retroperitoneal, affixed to the back wall of the peritoneum of the abdominal cavity. It is a capsular structure, so it's going to be covered by this renal capsule. And because it's capsular, it's also going to invaginate. The invagination is going to allow for blood vessels and the ureter to pass through and into the kidney. This is going to be called the renal hilum. The kidney is going to be separated into two major divisions. The first and outermost division is the cortex. Now it's important to note that the cortex is going to invaginate and push in between the next region or the medulla and it's going to be called the renal columns. That brings us to these pyramidal shaped structures. These are called renal pyramids. The renal pyramids in a whole are going to form the medulla or the innermost portion of the kidney. At the bottom of each renal pyramid is the renal papillae. This is where urine is going to be concentrated via the collecting duct that we see right here. And it's going to slowly drip urine into the minor calyx. Each pyramid, each renal papillae, is going to drain into its own minor calyx. Now the minor calyces are going to converge into our next large structure called the major calyx. Urine is going to pull in the major calyx and going to drain into the renal pelvis. From the renal pelvis, urine is going to travel down the ureters and then converge at the bladder. Now, we're going to look at the vasculature of the kidneys. We're going to start right here at our renal artery. We're going to branch to become our segmental arteries. We're going to move up in between the columns, in between the pyramids, to our interlobar arteries. We're going to move across the base of the pyramid. This is going to be called our arcuate arteries. Now, this is where I like to change the terminology of these veins that radiate into the cortex. Notice I said radiate into the cortex. Your book might call these interlobular arteries. I prefer cortical radiate arteries. And the reason why I prefer cortical radiate is because interlobular gets confused very quickly and often by students with interlobar arteries. So you have your interlobar arteries and you have your interlobular arteries. I prefer interlobar to arcuate to cortical radiate. I think that this name is a little better suited for students as it directly implies the radiation. So how these arteries radiate into the cortex. So cortical radiate. From there we could look at this model right here and we can see this is going to be our arcuate. This is our cortical radiate. We're going to branch to form our afferent arterial. Now our afferent arterial, we're now moving into Bowman's capsule, into the glomerulus. The afferent arterial is going to send blood into the glomerulus. It's going to do its magic. It's going to filter and it's going to travel out the efferent or efferent arterial. Once we leave the efferent arterial, we're going to go to our peritubular capillaries or our vasa recta, depending on what type of nephron we're dealing with. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then we're going to return via our venous flow. So from venous, we're going to see again our cortical radiate vein, our arcuate vein. So we can move back to this model over here. Cortical radiate vein to arcuate vein to interlobar vein directly out to our renal vein. Notice that our venous flow does not have a segmental portion like our counterpart on the arterial side. It goes from interlobar directly to renal vein no segmental. So make sure you get that straight. We're going to move over to this middle portion and we're going to look at the nephron in depth. All these purple round balls that you see are and is the Bowman's capsule or renal corpuscle. It is seen right here as well and macroscopically in this structure right here which we'll get to in a little bit. Now off of that Bowman's capsule you have your proximal convoluted meaning squiggly tubule we're going to drop by our descending limb. We're going to reach the loop of Henle. And we're going to come up our ascending limb. We're then going to reach our distal convoluted tubule. 
and we're going to continue into our collecting duct. Now the collecting duct is going to terminate at that renal papillae, which is going to act like this leaky sieve that will drip concentrated urine into the minor, back over here, the minor calyx. So a couple things I want to point out just so we could orient ourselves. This region right here is the cortex. Everything below is going to be the medulla. Now I want you to look at two different types of nephrons right here. Notice this one's a little more short. The majority of the nephron stays in the cortex. This is called the cortical nephron. We look at this nephron right here, it is longer. And the majority of the nephron lies in the medulla. This is known as a juxtamedullary nephron. And when we get to lecture, we're going to talk about these and discuss what they do. They are specialized for different functions, uh, like concentrating, concentrating urine uh, versus reabsorbing nutrients or components within and through these peritubular capillaries. And each nephron is going to have a different type of capillary network, whether it's peritubular or whether it's the vasa recta and the juxtamedullary nephron. We're going to go right here, this, this big guy right here. This is our Bowman's capsule. Okay, It is a simple squamous epithelium that lines and forms this capsule. Inside is the glomerulus. This is going to be where we're going to be filtering all our blood, making essentially urine. We're going to continue out of this tube right here. Now this portion of the tube, notice epithelium changes to simple cuboidal. This is going to carry right here to our proximal convoluted tubule. I want you to pay note to this purple structure right here. A lot of students get confused and don't really understand what this is. And again, we're gonna cover this in lecture, but this tube is where the distal convoluted tubule is gonna turn itself around and come in between the efferent and afferent arterial. This is, there are gonna be specialized cells here this is called the juxtaglomerular complex. The macula densa are going to be specialized cells that are going to serve a very important function in renal regulation. And we'll, again, we're going to talk about that in lecture. So this pretty much concludes our anatomy of the kidneys as we covered in lab. Again, I hope this proved to be helpful for everyone. Good luck studying and subscribe if you like the video.